Here the summary of the seventh chapter where it was told, eighth chapter, it was in the eighth chapter we saw the denial of knowledge. In the seventh chapter we saw the denial of ignorance. And here it is being told that knowledge and ignorance both are actually ignorance only. We think there is two types of knowledge. One is self-knowledge which does not require the medium of thought. That is pure consciousness. And the worldly knowledge requires the medium of thought to know. But that knowledge which uses the medium of thought comes under the purview of ignorance. And we saw in the chapter 7 that there is nothing called ignorance. <laughs> so which means both remain denied. And here the recap is being done. Swamiji says, beautifully Swamiji has done, written. We will contemplate and think over it. In fact, the grounds for the denial of knowledge in the self was prepared in the seventh chapter where it was stated, what is referred to as knowledge is another form of ignorance. I just explained you that. Pure consciousness is knowledge, so also objective perception is knowledge. So pure consciousness is knowledge without thought, objective perception is knowledge with thought. In the former, thought process is not involved, while in the latter, thought construct is a foundation. Okay, here it says in this manner. Dhaneshwar Maharaj says, My revered Gurudeva made me unbecome and free myself from the thought prison just to be myself. When I tried to understand the difference between being and unbecoming, I disappeared. So here when he says, be very attentive, when he says, my revered Gurudeva made me unbecome and free myself from the thought prison just to be myself. Where is this idea that I need to liberate? Where is this idea that I want to be pure consciousness? Where is this idea that I want to know the reality? You are already that. But as long as you are swimming in your mind in the, in the, in the waves of thoughts and trying through the thoughts and through the thoughts trying to know yourself, it is always going to be a never-ending story. So we have to find some way, like whole day we are living a life of waking, isn't it? Only to go to sleep. We want to be free of the thought constructs because that we enjoy the deep sleep more than being awake. Exactly the same way. Imagine if we are in uh, uh, abiding in ourselves as ourselves without any thoughts, not thinking about the self, but being the self. That will be the most auspicious uh, way to be. He helped me establish in my being so firmly and intensely of this experience, uh, of this experience is so acute that to share this knowledge, thought-free knowledge, this Amrit Anubhava is revealed. Amrit Anubhava means what? What does Amrit, Amrit means? Amrit means nectar. Uh, Anubhava means experience. Experience of the divine. Experience of the nectar of the divine. Nectarine divine. This Amrut Anubhava is revealed. In this absolute being, there is no contradiction of relative experience without losing sight of essential non-duality. So we see that this whole creation, this whole opposites are coexisting. At the creation level, all are coexisting. But I got nothing to do with it. Just like the day and night are coexisting in the sun. But from sun's point of view, 
It doesn't matter if there is day or if there is night. From his point of view, <laughs> we may say, sitting here, that the sun is supporting day and night, but from sun's point of view, there is no day and night. So where are day and night? Only a, only a phenomena. So they are not. <coughs> so same way. Um, he helped me establish in my being so firmly and intensely of this experience is so acute that to share this knowledge, thought free knowledge, this Amruta Nubhava is revealed. In this absolute being, there is no contradiction of relative experience without losing the sight of essential non-duality. Thus no expression in words or thoughts is found suitable to express this being. Because how can words which are of by nature limited can reveal the unlimited? It is not possible. The truth is beyond the words. The truth is beyond the mind. Mind only works in relativity. And we are talking about the absolute, which is beyond relativity. In fact, not knowing oneself is knowing oneself. I am simultaneously transcendental to the relativity and yet imminent in them. So what does it mean? that I am transcendental to relativity and yet eminent to them, that the uh, relativity cannot exist without me. The relativity of day and night cannot exist without the sun. Imagine the sun saying that or the water saying that about the waves, that the ex appearance and disappearance of the wave, I am only eminent in <laughs> whether there is a wave or there is no wave, I am eminent in it. The sun says, without me, this day, the day and night cannot exist. But I am not affected by the day and night. I am transcendental. The water says, I am not affected because the wave has appeared, so I have not become less. And if the wave has disappeared, I have not become complete. I am ever the same. This experience, and this should be our experience, because thoughts have appeared, we have not become less. Because senses are functioning, uh, we have not become less. Because waking and dream have come, we have not become less. Because we have gone to deep sleep, we have not become one with ourselves. Because we have gone into samadhi, we have not become one with ourselves. These are all uh, mental uh, conditions, including samadhi. So you are supporting all of them, you are expressing through all of the self is expressing in spite of their expression. Yet it is transcendental to all these expressions at the level of the mind. And what are the expressions at the level of mind? Mind functions in duality and mind can go through waking, dream, deep sleep and samadhi. <laughs> but the self is beyond all this, yet supporting all this, yet expressing through all this without the self. Waking dream, deep sleep, samadhi cannot take place. Thoughts cannot take place. Emotions cannot take place. Seeing, hearing, touching, feeling, tasting cannot take place. Memories cannot take place. So, self alone is in and through because without other than the self, nothing is there. So, on that self, all these are being imagined. This phenomena is appearing. Just like water is everywhere, but on it, the wave and the ocean are being imagined the phenomena of wave is being seen but what are you touching feeling tasting water but you're calling it a wave <laughs> so this it's very very fine either you can get lost in wave or at the same time be one with the water either you can be lost in the thoughts or while the thoughts are there still you can be one with the substratum that you are that extreme alertness is required. This experience of being is so auspicious, unique and secret that it is difficult to talk about it to anyone. In this abode of Sukh, and what is the best way to talk about it? The way the scriptures talk about it. That's all. The way the great masters talk about it. And how do they talk? 
Sometimes they may use words, sometimes they may remain silent. <laughs> they just are, that's it. In this abode of supreme being, where ignorance has no say, how its relative knowledge will be valid. Huh? In this abode of supreme being, where ignorance has no say, how its relative knowledge will be valid. So, the word knowledge, the thought knowledge, is the baby of ignorance. <laughs> huh? Within ignorance, or you can say, it has come about as a reaction to ignorance. And it is limited. Ignorance is also limited. Uh, knowledge also is limited. How can it ever reveal the, the truth? It cannot. So, the knowledge is respected only in the kingdom of ignorance. In my... Huh, so, this word knowledge, thought knowledge is important only when we are in the world of ignorance. What is the world of ignorance? When you are living as this body, when we take this world to be real, when we think we are the mind, and as long as we consider ourselves to be an individual, till then we will continue to seek, read this book, read that book, listen to this lecture, listen to that lecture, collect information. But basically, we are fooling ourselves because we are just going round and round within ignorance. That's all. You have to shoot out of this. You have to recognize you are supporting this whole thing, yet you are transcendental. And that is only possible by being and not giving too much importance to the knowledge nor too much importance to the ignorance. You can study about, the, about it, we are studying, we are also using the words, but every sentence, every verse that is coming is taking us beyond the words. The knowledge is respected only in the kingdom of ignorance. In my absolute being, where ignorance cannot be, what is the validity of this knowledge? How can it ever gain a status of honor? In my abode, there is none who is ignorant or wise. So just like from the sun's point of view, there is no day and no night. Take the day to be wise, take the night to be ignorant. So from the point of view of the self, there is no ignorant, nor there is any wise. All that there is, is that's it. Everything is my own glory. On a superficial inquiry, it appears that knowledge and ignorance are different, but when properly inquired, both disappear, just as exchanging the position of experiencer and experienced in a couple by changing their heads can only destroy them. So the example that Nyaneshwar Maharaj gave was that a husband and wife are there and they want to change positions. So the husband says, wife, I want to think like you. And the wife says, I want to think like you, so that we can relate to each other and they cut their heads to replace. But what happens in the end? Both of them die. <laughs> Same thing happens with knowledge and ignorance. <laughs> so whenever an inquiry is made, this is what happens. Therefore, how meaningless it is to inquire into jnana, knowledge, versus adnana. In short, the pure consciousness itself becomes the knowledge thought and ignorance thought and this thought is negated by the knowledge thought and thus both are null and void in the pure consciousness. Remember, the subject, the pure consciousness, the absolute subject himself becomes the subject and the object in the mind. Subject and object, this is the absolute. He himself is becoming the subject and the object. When this subject and object is, first the subject is separated from the object and then this subject is made or made to contemplate and educated or told or instructed by the teacher that you are actually the absolute. Then the th and moreover, when this fellow separates from the object, then his if he maintains this position, after some time, 
the impact of the objects eventually dies away. And when the impact of the objects die away because he is just merely a witness, not giving value and attention to them, when these are unable to influence this fellow and they die, they, they go their own way, this fellow has got no existence now. He is only existing on account of these. Husband is existing only on account of wife. If wife goes away, husband cannot remain a husband. He becomes a man. So similarly, when the objects go away, the subject becomes automatically goes back to being the absolute subject. And that is what is being said here. In fact, the knower is indeed the not knower and the not knower is the knower. So, if you say, I know that I am Brahman, I know I am the Absolute, where is this idea coming? In the mind. It is thought knowledge and the thought can never come to know the truth. See? And the not knower is the knower, the one who doesn't say anything and yet is, he is the true knower. Therefore, where do the knowledge and ignorance live separately apart from being together in pure consciousness? Thus the knower and the known or knowledge and ignorance are in the womb of consciousness, just as day and night live together in the sun. In this way, this chapter takes us beyond the limitations of thought knowledge, which is an intermediate step to dive deep in the thought-free abode of pure knowledge. So in this way, Dhaneshwar Maharaj took us our away from our obsession of objective knowledge. <clears throat> objective knowledge means what? What did we say? This is subject, this is absolute subject, this is subject, this is object. All knowledge about this object and this subject by way of thought is called objective knowledge. <laughs> and what is this? Either you can call it waking, dreaming, deep sleep, or you can call it uh, uh, gross body, subtle body, causal body, or you can call it <coughs> earth, he heaven and hell. <laughs> everything that you, uh, everything other than yourself that you are seeing, observing, knowing is this just represented by these three. have to go beyond even though everything knowledge and ignorance cannot express cannot manifest without the substratum yet the substratum is transcendental to both the knowledge and ignorance ignorance and knowledge are just feeding each other that's all <laughs> nothing else don't get caught up in it so the whole study of scriptures we are doing so many texts, is not to appreciate the scriptures, is not to collect information. Our, if, if it, our approach is subjective in nature, then slowly, slowly as we are going, uh, going through the various uh, scriptures, our uh, steadiness in the self, because every inquiry that comes about is pushing us back into ourselves. Every text is telling us, drop the words, drop the mind, go beyond the senses. Today's meditation was also very similar. Huh? So go, Every, but we, oh, now what do I have to do? Now what do I have to do? How do I solve this? How do I do that? How do I make this happen? We're still caught up in mind. Get out of it. And the only way to get out of it, stop asking questions. Remain silent. Answers are inside you. Sun doesn't need the answer about question, uh, sun, day and night. Even if you try to explain the sun, what is day and night, he will never understand. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> if you try to explain to the water, what is ocean and wave, wave water will never understand. He says, I alone am man. What are you trying to explain to me? What, what, what is this? 
it is it is that foolish how we are asking questions and trying to understand ourselves we are already that now if this is the state we see what we have gone through now we have gone through eight chapters the first was the shiva shakti samavesh the principle of non duality then we had the guru stavana the glory of the guru then which uh, vacharana parihara transcending the limitations of the four speeches where we saw the vaikari madhyama pashyanti para and going beyond the speech then we had the in the sixth uh, in the in the where in the next chapter jnana ajnana bheda kathana and what is undifferentiated knowledge then eva then in the next chapter we saw the inadequacy of the words satchidananda to reveal the truth there it was told that sat is because is a word used only to cancel asat meaning existence is word existence to represent the reality is only told to cancel non existence consciousness is only used to cancel non consciousness and ananda is only used to cancel misery and in this way it was told such is anand these words that we so freely uh, use they cannot reveal the truth because truth is beyond the words and then after that uh, in the next chapter having having uh, shown to us that the word satchidananda cannot reveal the truth it was the next chapter told us how any word cannot reveal the truth so the word words the the power of the words the value of the words the impact of the words was devalued in the next chapter and after that i think came the after that was the uh, chapter on agnana khandana the deny uh, ignorance was denied and then the last mm -hmm. chapter that we did was gnana khandana wherein the knowledge is denied so in this way if you will see every chapter is taking you beyond relativity every chapter the teacher gnaneshwar maharaj he is not allowing you to take any support either of any experience either of any words and here it mainly it is focused on words shabd means word so words devalued satchidananda is a word that were also devalued then ignorance is a word that was also devalued whatever it represents knowledge is also various words the objective perceptions they were also devalued and in this way the teacher is because this is his own direct experience and what is his direct experience he is coming he is explaining that in this text and in this way what is that undifferentiated knowledge in which such a sage is abiding such a realized person who is ever with his own being in his own being as his own being what is the experience of uh, water what is the experience of say space which is not touched by air fire water earth yet supporting all of them but you ask the space can do you know air fire water earth it says no why it alone is these are just mere occupying uh, a minuscule mini minuscule area in the total cosmos the total bodies the galaxies if you put them all together according to our scriptures they are occupying if this whole body is the total space infinite space the total gross bodies means galaxies and uh, whatever so many if you put them all together 
there will be only as much space as occupied by a tiny, tiny, tiny pinprick dot on your right toenail. So compared to the total space, how much is that tiny dot which is not even, uh, which you can't even see on your toenail? That much space, the total heavenly bodies are occupying in the total space, meaning they don't exist. Just, just how much, how much space are all the waves occupying in the total waters? <laughs> how much space in the total waters? <laughs> if you take it grossly, they are appearing on the surface. But how much is water? 14 kilometers deep. In the deepest point. So compared to the total waters, the area occupied by the total number of waves put together is very, very minuscule. And that also we are talking about it, that what wave is occupying the area. Wave is already the water. <laughs> so this way, the teacher is trying to... Is helping us to come out of our trap of thoughts. Thoughts are words, isn't it? Telling, uh, helping us to come out of the uh, trap of thought so that we can be. And here, how does this realized master uh, live? What is his, uh, and what is this? The chapter says, Jivan Mukta uh, Dasha Kathana, meaning the living in the joy of liberation, how does such a master who is abiding in that undifferentiated knowledge, he is abiding in the self, self is undifferentiated knowledge. When it becomes differentiated, what happens? I and that comes about, isn't it? Subject and object comes about. So he has gone beyond that and he is abiding there. Now this chapter, Second last chapter. So what is this chapter about our Swamiji says? Jnaneshwar Maharaj gave Upadesha to many of many in his Jnaneshwari. His commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, having himself received Upadesha from his Guru Nivritti Nath. So I am teaching Jnaneshwari on Thursdays. So there, that is the topic. One of those who came to know of the young saint was Changdev Maharaj. So there is a text called Changdev Pasashti. Hmm? 65 verses of instruction given to Changdev, who was a yogi in the Natha Sampradaya and his age was more than thousand years living in the outskirts and the jungles of Maharashtra and in his presence all natural enemies used to become friends. Lion will not eat other animals, snake will not bite anyone, Cat and dog will go together. Cat and mice will walk together. The, the, the peacock will not kill the snakes. All the animals and all the beings, even the people, when they, when they were around him, they will be at, in, in harmony with each other, at peace with each other. This was his power. And one day he came to know that there is some young boy 19, 20 years old and they say he is a great master. So he wanted. So here it says, who through his power of Kaya Kalp had lived for over 1400 years. Okay, not 1400 years. What is Kaya Kalp? Kaya Kalp is a technology in yoga wherein a person can become young. smiling <laughs> so before while the body is healthy while the body is healthy 
And suppose you are, uh, as a yogi, you know that your life will be 40 years or 50 years or 60 years. So once they start, once they know that it's coming, first sign, immediately they used to do the kaya kalp. It used to require, or it still requires, about 15, 20 years of sadhana. By doing 15, 20 years of sadhana, again the body becomes 16 years old. A total uh, re reformation at the cellular and DNA level. And again that person will continue to live another 20, 30 years. Again he will do the sadhana, again he will become 16, again he will go up to 40, 50, again he will do the sadhana. And this way you can continue the life. And this fellow, this Mahatma, Changdev Maharaj, he had done it for, four, his life was 1400 years old. I have met person who is 350 years old in our Kantak. Devra Baba in the 2002 uh, uh, Kumbh Mela, very, very famous Devra Baba. So many people have met him, five, more than 500 years old. And he chose to give his body up in that Kumbh Mela and he vanished from there. So such people are there. Oh, this is just figment of it. Maybe you, if that is your belief, then so be it. What we can do about it? He wanted guidance, but from understand one thing: in this creation, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. It only depends upon your imagination and creativity. And in our scriptures, all possibilities are given. But are you game to take it on <laughs> rather than just sit here and comment that is not possible, this is not possible, this is difficult. No, you have to apply. As much as a realization of the self is possible, so also manifesting the potentiality to its ultimate end in the, in the manifestation which is at the level of mind. That is also possible. It is not only about self. It is also that that same self is alone the whole thing. There is nothing else other than the self. So that potentiality we saw in the first chapter, Shiva Shakti Samavesh, that potentiality, Shiva and Shakti, that Shakti, what is its ultimate? What is its expanse? What is its, um, uh, the, what are the possibilities that can take place? It's unlimited. So just knowing the self is one thing, but in Kashmiri Shaivism, manifesting that knowing the, the self that I am as the phenomena, that is also another thing. And this in, in Nath Sampradaya, they do that. He wanted guidance from the young Nyandev, but not knowing how to address him and what to say, sent a blank sheet of paper. Nyandev understood and almost in a semi-transcendental state, gave one-to-one Tattva Masi Mahavakya Upadesha to Chandev in 65 OVs called Chandev Pasashti according to the Natha Sampradaya. So on that blank piece of paper, Nyaneshwar Maharaj gave him 65 instructions. And what were the six, 65 instructions? You are that. In different ways. It, uh, if, if, if I can find that book, we'll one day take it. <laughs> you are that. A 19 year old, 20 year old giving instruction to a 14 year old. In that, I told you, in that, this Chandev Maharaj, when he got this message, oh, he says, I have to go to him, I have to go to go and meet him. Who is this? Oh, he's such a young fellow, but how come he is giving me? And he wanted to meet him, so he came with his entire glory. What was his glory? All his disciples. And as he is coming, and he was he used to ride on a lion, tiger, and the tiger, and the tiger is coming. He's on the his vehicle is the tiger. Others are walking or on the animals. And as he's passing by, all animals in that area they are joining the whole caravan and coming to Nyaneshwar Maharaj. Imagine the scene. And Naneshwar Maharaj comes to know that that 14-year-old great Mahatma is coming towards him and they were, 
he and his four brothers and sisters they were brushing their teeth and the sister said uh, brother we should not delay when a great mahatma is coming let's go straight away just just drop one must not waste time uh, to be in the presence of a mahatma of a realized Mah of a great one so nanishwar mahara says then how can we know we have to go we have to walk she says no make this wall in which on which we are sitting uh, let's take the wall uh, sit on the wall and go together and there at that moment inspired by his sister mukta bai who herself was a great saint at that young age all four brothers were great saints nareshwar maharaj made the inert wall to fly with four of them and he lands in front of the changdev maharaj changdev maharaj he saw, what was the thought in his mind he said i have mastered controlling and bringing harmony in all living beings but this young fellow he has mastered to control inert matter immediately fell at his feet when he fell at his feet uh, he did not leave after for some, quite some time but naneshwar maharaj kept him aside he says you stay with mukta bai that young girl 15 16 years old he said she is your teacher i am not your teacher he has given her given him the 65 verses but how to unfold them within himself the arrogance that this 1400 year old man ha uh, mahatma had yogi had that i am so great that arrogance had to be <laughs> dissolved and that was brought about until he does not surrender to a girl see <coughs> and she then instructs him and then he and once it clicks because of her words he goes away then yes wonderful absolutely amrit anubhav followed which is not an upadesha from one individual to another but it is a silent talk of the parmatman tatva with himself hmm? amrit anubhav means what divine nectar experience isn't it <coughs> is divine nectar experience can it be communicated by the ornament to the gold or by the gold to the ornament or they are ever the gold is ever abiding in that can it be communicated by the waves to the water or the water is ever abiding in that divine experience of fullness of oneness so it is not an upadesha it's not an instruction naneshwar uh, swami ji is saying it is not an instruction that has to be given by one person to another person it is a state of absolute abidance in the previous chapter he concluded with the thought that no or known or knowledge ignorance having been absorbed into the womb of pure consciousness having been negated in the space that is consciousness the experience of one's own being is established having reached this point of spiritual development and having become firmly established in the knowledge the lifestyle thereafter is called the life of a jivan mukta purusha i have already said this that on, once the person has gone beyond all duality once the person has come to abide without a thought in his own being not as an objective uh, idea but as his own subjective ex experienceless experience and he continues to be in that just like you don't have to remind yourself every day i am a woman or i am a man it is a subject at, at a relative level it is your subjective experience every day that you are a man or a woman you don't keep repeating yourself oh, i think i know I, i am a man i have to be a man i have to be a woman oh, what do i have to do be a woman you are already a woman and you are already a man the teacher is saying drop that you are the divine 
and once you are there a jivan mukta purusha without any thought without any repetition without any objective uh, take on it is ever abiding in that uh, supreme nectarine <laughs> experience of the self of the divine the call and and how he lives in his daily life this is given in many scriptures bhagavad gita also the second chapter from verse i, I think last uh, 17 or 20 verses of the second chapter they are about the jivan mukta purush lakshana how he lives he does not like he does not like for him there is no in and out there is no, there is no sense of otherness in him there is no dif- he doesn't create differentiation where he goes hmm? he is not under the influence of the senses and the organs of action and the mind memory intellect and ego and it goes on in his presence uh, nobody feels threatened where he goes there only auspiciousness is because he is of the nature of auspiciousness and blessings even if that per- a realized master scolds it is a blessing it cannot be any other way so there are many many and then in upanishads also it is told so here let's see what, how it unfolds the qualities of the jivan mukta purusha and his lifestyle are given great importance in the bhagavad gita where the subject is discussed in three places in three different ways in the chapter 2 as the sthita prajna lakshana that means the, what are the symptoms of a person abiding in his uh, divine self then in the 12th chapter as the bhakta or devotee and the, uh, uh, and in the chapter 14 as the gunatita purusha who, who he who has gone beyond the three gunas of sattva rajas and tamas because this whole creation is a flux of these three potentialities knowledge uh, 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 sattva dynamism rajas and inertia tamas this flux of these three is the whole creation he who has gone beyond this flux and where is this flux in the mind <laughs> and in this way Mm, uh, these three types of expressions of the jivan mukta purusha are given to emphasize the glory of such a purusha the one who is living in freedom in this world without limitations of any kind at any given time in history of mankind, mankind such people are always available but to become aware of their presence you have to be seeking it then they will come into your life otherwise they will not they don't want advertisement <laughs> they may some of them are there they will become famous but majority of them they remain there in a aloof you seek the self and one of the masters will come into your life like in nyaneshwar maharaj's life his elder brother himself who became the teacher and he accepted it also so nisarga dutt maharaj only once he went to a satsang he accepted the, the teacher said tatva see you are that he said tell me how to story over he didn't go and keep please tell me i didn't understand i got so many hundreds of questions please explain please explain he had interaction he listened to the teacher one and a half hours first time in his life after that he must have spent 15 20 minutes asking the questions or listening to what is the methodology the technique to come to abide in the self after that he never went back and asked any questions not even one not even one because he had absolute faith in the words of his master of his teacher two years he kept contemplating on whatever the teacher told him two years came out a realized master then why is it not happening stop asking questions b 
questions are only in the mind you are not the mind no thought can ever give you the solace the tranquility the peace that you are seeking because it is your being to whom is this subject relevant not to him who is ignorant but he does not have the courage to face the contents of his own mind nor to give up his hold on so many things which are keeping his self esteem popped up see how without any uh, compassion directly it is being banged on your head this is the reason why you don't want to be subjective what is the first he does not have the courage to face his own mind that is the reason so we want a prop we want someone to touch our head we want someone to teach us we want someone to guide us but how long are you going to hold on to that stick you have to give up that stick you have to give up that prop nor it does not have the courage to face the contents of his or her own mind nor to give them up because why he doesn't want to or that seeker doesn't want to give it up because he is attached to his memory oh why i was born on this day i miss my mother i miss my uh, uh, you know relatives i miss i am so far away or if someone has died oh it was such a nice time we had when we were young now i am old i wish i was back in those days uh, next life is guaranteed next life is guaranteed if these type of thoughts are there but this is where we we think this is normal <laughs> his hold on so many things which are keeping his self hold on his body hold on his breath hold on his house hold on his car hold on his uh, re- relations and possessions he wants to keep the control who is he the fictitious entity the ego who is the ego it is consciousness alone but that consciousness which is under the control of mind intellect and the senses so unless and until and how do we invoke this courage how do we invoke this courage not by controlling the mind senses etc we control the we invoke the courage only by contemplating on the self only by contemplating on the divine thing theme the courage to shoot out of the gravity of the mind of the relativity only from the by the grace it will come you don't have that strength to you can yes you can for some time but it will make you into a very funny, funny person when you yourself apply the will to control the shortcomings in you a very funny personality comes out which is not balanced which is not integrated which is not in harmony with nature around and you see many people like that but when our attention is on the self a natural withdrawal from everything that we are not takes place automatically just like in going to deep sleep a natural withdrawal that is what is required it is not intended for the wise the one who is already a jivan mukta who needs no recognition or certification so who is this subject matter or what or this this particular chapter addressed to not to a realized person he is already <coughs> abiding in it it is not a, being addressed to a person who does not have a, a, a control who does not want to give up the world it is not for him also <coughs> world meaning not just the world also his mind also his memories also his, uh, 
to hold on. No, it is not being it is not being addressed to that uh, person also. Therefore, the subject can only be meant for those who belong to neither to neither category. That is to those who have not reached the Jivan Mukta stage, nor they are satisfied with their present lifestyle. So those who are not happy with their present lifestyle, they are the seekers. They are looking for some other avenue of uh, uh, existence. That they, they are, no, there must be something else apart from what I am living right now. For such a mumukshu, and who are these people? They are the seekers. For such a seeker of liberation, the jidnyasu, the seeker of knowledge, who is walking the spiritual path, the subject is of paramount importance and inspiration. Because once you have studied Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, various other scriptures, it's the same thing repeated in different ways in various other scriptures then it becomes very dry. Then how do we keep our inspiration to live that path by reading the life stories of great realized masters? Because we can relate to them. This is word knowledge. <clears throat> but as we are reading this text, Amrit Anubhav, we know it is written by a person who was born like us. So our interaction with this knowledge is a bit different. Every now and then we bring him in between. In the Upanishads, in the, um, the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna wrote, told. Oh, who is Krishna? I don't know. He is an idea at the moment for you. You have never experienced him, isn't it? Who is Buddha? An idea. You, he is not in your... You have not met him. You have not experienced... Ah, he wrote all this and sent us on a journey of confusion. Too much knowledge. <laughs> See? So when we read the stories of saints and sages who were born like us, who went through difficulties like us, yet invoked the courage, devotion, uh, surrender to that divine and attained. Attained meaning came to abide in that divine as the divine. And there are many still today. And we come across them, when we read about them, we have a ray of hope that it is possible, maybe, that I can also get there. If you are a seeker, you will be thrilled that, hey, it is possible, why not? I must give it a go. That is why the regular study of the lives of saints and sages forms an important component of spiritual sadhana. The lives of these masters illustrate the Jivan Mukta Lakshana. This subject of Jivan Mukta Lakshana constitutes the major content of the ninth chapter of Amruta Nubhava. It describes how the Shuddha Tattva, the pure essence, the experience of the non-dual, conscious blissful existence is now manifesting from the same point from where earlier there was the manifestation of a limited individual. There is no change of body. See, this is this you can understand. It is not very difficult. A bachelor is expressing through the same body. Then he gets married. Husband starts expressing through the same body. <laughs> right? Then the marriage breaks down then the divorcee starts expressing through the same body. <laughs> body is the same. So which hat are you wearing? Are you the wearing a hat of relation? Are you wearing the hat of being the body? Are you wearing the hat of being the mind or the intellect? Are you wearing the uh, hat of being the ego? Are you wearing the hat of being the one with the uh, total? Or are you wearing the hat of being that one absolute. It's all this. Question is, what do you think you are? Are you the husband? Are you the wife? Are you the brother? Are you the sister? Are you the man? Going beyond, are you the body? Are you the breathing mechanism? 
आर यू द इमोशनल पर्सन आर यू द कंसेप्ट आइडियाज विच मेक योर स्वभाव विच मेक योर नेचर एज यू आर एट दिस मोमेंट और यू हैव यू हैव बीन इंस्पायर्ड एंड यू हैव कम बियॉन्ड यू हैव ड्रॉप्ड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड नाउ यू हैव गॉट आइडेंटिफाइड टू द टोटल सो आर यू द टोटल आई not only for this body mind intellect but for all the body mind intellect or are you that absolute waters but it's the same one it is not this fella to get the be the absolute it is that he doesn't have to merge into something else to be the absolute he has to redefine first and then be that how much time does it take you how much time does it take you to change positions you are standing in a family gathering your wife is your husband is there or your wife is there you are a wife or a husband at that moment a grandchild comes uh, and comes running to you all you do is shift your attention or just your ears are available to the sound of that grandchild immediately the grandmother comes into play at that time wife is not in the play immediate shift i am talking to you and i am talking if my mom is there i'll be talking to you as a friend the moment i talk to i shift my attention to the mom immediately a son starts talking how how quick was that shift did it, was there any lag in it did you have to do any sadhana to shift positions did you have to do any sh to shift positions that effortless that effortless is the shift to the self <laughs> from the matter from the mind be the self just as easy it is from and you do it so efficiently every day <laughs> from person to person from relative to relative here you are a listener then you will be a seer then you will be a hearer how effortlessly it is going on you are shifting positions isn't it within yourself that easy it is to shift from being an individual to be the absolute right now you are being the individual the being will continue the individual has to be replaced with absolute <laughs> it's that simple the subject of jivan mukta purusha constitutes the major content of the ninth chapter uh, we done this ha huh. it describes how the shuddha tattva the experience of non dual conscious blissful existence is now manifesting from the same point from where earlier there was the manifestation of a limited individual there is no change of body in the jivan mukta the sukshma sharira or the linga sharira or the jiva bhav has been totally absorbed or burnt away what is sukshma sharira the personality and what is the personality based on your personality you are unique to her what is your personality based on your convictions your subconscious impressions the the basic blueprint which is making you express as louis making you express as lumina that blueprint is dead and, and gone. gone not even an iota of memory is left behind it has been uh, oh, wh what do you call just like an iron filing when it comes in the presence of a magnet it also becomes and when it becomes one with the magnet by being in its uh, in its proximity it also becomes has the properties of magnetism isn't it same way all our impressions all our uh, the entire matter all our memories all our thoughts all our convictions by continuously us being uh, initially thinking about the self now being the self 
go through the transformation and everything becomes the divine the thoughts are divine the body or not only this body the mahatma doesn't think i am this body he is just just like light is expressing through every bulb light is a principle he considers himself to be the consciousness and he he sees that he is expressing through everyone but for him everything is divine there is no this versus that there is no i versus you and therefore he says but because of the momentum the gross body continues to function like a car which has run out of petrol still keeps moving till the previous momentum lasts the same way the example that we i gave we we give is when you switch off the fan because of the previous momentum the fan keeps moving around for some time till it comes to a standstill isn't it exactly the same way this body when what is the fuel for this life to continue for this body to continue what is the fuel the desires <laughs> the subconscious impressions the blueprint it is making this body going on see so you have because of certain the, 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 at the body level it is the prarabdha karma which has brought about uh, that has manifested as this body the future births are burnt away the past is burnt away the arrow has been already shot your body is the arrow now you cannot stop this arrow in between the body will continue till it reaches the wherever it has to go and what is its destination what is the destination of the body death <laughs> so it will continue but while it is continuing the person who is expressing through this body has become realized but the momentum but now there is no more momentum your momentum is now i have to go to the class now i have to do this now to, for him there is nothing to do see but because of the momentum the gross body continues to function like a car which has run out of petrol and still keeps moving till the previous momentum last likewise the jivan mukta when this particular body drops away there is no more return to the world of relative existence for such a great master who is abiding in the self as the self beautiful no <laughs> we are that and we are living this wretched life thinking we are brother sister son <laughs> teacher student <laughs> see this body this disease this self so in this way now with this introduction the chapter on this uh, the living the joy of liberation jivan mukta dasha the condition of a jivan mukta person liberated person that is in <coughs> enumerated om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamugachade purnasya purnamadaya purnameva avashishyate om shanti 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 hi हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ